Welcome to Heart the Lark. We're going to do another in the divisions of time. Um, please watch my previous one on that. And, and by all means, when I'm done, please comment on these and give me ideas of some other things that you'd like to see in addition to the ones I come up with. Today, we're going to do um, BC, AD, and uh, BCE, and CE. And what we mean by that is um, in divisions of time, typically humanity oftentimes finds an event that is like a true divider of, of time, and it's so important that they break time with it. So for instance, just to give you this example, we could take a look at the automobile and see what it's done to the earth, and we could say the invention of the automobile is a break in time. We could take the airplane, we could take the modern computer, and those are all, all very arguable because they've transformed the earth but they came so late that we're not going to change the dating system. Just to give you another example, the idea of writing, that invention is so important, even though the vast majority of people at the time were illiterate, that we actually break time and we call it prehistory if it comes before writing and history if it comes after. Bear in mind that that does not happen at the time. It's not like a hundred years later they went, hey, isn't it cool that we can now divide time by that cool little note we wrote? You didn't do that. They didn't do that until like the 1700s, 1800s AD to come up with the divisions of time like prehistory. Well, the other division of time that we're going to talk about today is the BCAD system. And that was actually created by a monk, uh, Dionysus Exegius. I, I'm slaughtering that name. It's very hard to say. I'll have it up on the screen. And that monk decided that if there was, and he was the Catholic monk, if there was one God and one Son of God, the birth of the Son of God was so important that time should be broken up in half by that. Now, he came up with that idea in 525 AD, 525 years after the birth of Christ. But he, he came up with that idea, and it's a pretty big idea. If you really believed that there was one God and he had only one son, the birth of that son would be a big deal. So he came up with this system. Now, he spoke Latin, so he did not say BC. He used the following phrase, ante Christum. Ante, you might have seen in a poker game, the ante is the money you put in before there's actually the game really starting and the betting starting. Uh, Christum, of course, is the Latin ver version of the word Christ. And so that's where we get before Christ. He also had, though, ante incarnatium dominicum, which means before the incarnation of God. <laughs> and those were the words before, but those are too crazy to say fast. And we're all about saying things fast in the world nowadays. So ante Christum became before Christ. And his other phrase for in the year of the Lord, he wrote in Latin, Anno Domini, and Anno Domini was easier than in the year of our Lord or in the year of the Lord. So that's what we use. So we use BC, an English word, and AD, a Latin word, to divide time. Again, he created it in 525. It wasn't really adopted until 800 when a guy named Charlemagne was crowned on Christmas Day of 800. Charlemagne, by the way, is a king in, in Western Europe uh, that simply means Charles the Magnificent, and he's fairly famous, and he did that in 800 AD, so it's a big deal. And then by the 1300s AD, this dating system had become very common. Bear in mind, in 800, when Charlemagne was crowned, the Crusades hadn't happened, and a lot of Europe was not Christian yet. By the 1300s, the vast majority of Europe was Christian. Why does that matter? Well, because within 200 years, we have explorers like Christopher Columbus, Amerigo Vespucci, uh, Vasco da Gama, Magellan, and others that are going to start exploring the oceans. They're going to find new lands, and they're going to dominate those new lands. They'll either conquer them, they're going to colonize them. And so Europe, from the 1500s into the 1900s, will colonize, conquer, and take over a great deal of the globe. They colonize and, and, and take over most all of Africa. They certainly dominate China. They, the British conquered most of India and ruled it for many years. So the, 
dating system was imposed upon the rest of the world. And that was true for all those hundreds of years. But in the most recent times, in the last 50, let's say, years, that more and more people are recognizing, hey, not everybody is Christian on earth. And if they're not all Christian, then this whole idea of before Christ and in the year of the Lord, that doesn't make sense. So they, what they've done is this. The dating system is so common and so accepted that we'll just accept that the dates are right. We're just going to title them different. And so what they do is that since it's so common, they called it the common era, everything from uh, Christ's life and, and birth, rather, through his life and all the way till now. That is today's date, 2021. It's 2021 common era because we're using the idea of the BCAD dating system, but we're using common era. And then everything before him, it's not before Christ era, it's before the common era. So they basically are just accepting that the dating system is so, um, we're so used to it that we're going to use it, but we're going to title it different so that we don't have to recognize the religious significance of BC and AD. And that is becoming so common that the textbooks are changing that way. It is what's happening. And so I will sometimes slip into BCAD because I'm old and I've used it for a long, long time. But on occasion, I will certainly do the BCE and CE as well, just to recognize that, again, not all of my viewers are of one faith. Not everybody on earth is of one faith. It's an important thing. Last thing I want to just point out, I've already mentioned prehistory, but I want to mention the Middle Ages for a minute because this is funny. The Middle Ages is not an era in world history. First of all, it's an era in European history, and it technically denotes the time from the fall of Rome to the Renaissance. But how many people living at the time called it that? Like, hey, I live in the Middle Ages. Isn't that fun? No one did that. They didn't name the Middle Ages for century, you know, for several centuries after the Middle Ages were over when they went, hey, let's impose a time in, hey, there's Rome falling. Hey, there's the Renaissance. Those are important. This middle zone, we'll call it the middle zone, the Middle Ages. The medieval ages is simply that used using the Latin word for middle. So the Middle Ages were invented after the Middle Ages. No one at the time called it that. And part of the Middle Ages, then this is kind of ridiculous, part of the Middle Ages is oftentimes called the Dark Ages. It wasn't like it was dark and cloudy. We called it that. We named it after the fact. It was a tough time. Let's call it the Dark Ages. It'll give kind of a connotation to it. We'll have some good music with that. And then we called it that. They never called it that, ever, in their whole lives, ever. Like when the fall of Rome happened, it wasn't like everybody went, oh my gosh, did you hear the thud? No one did that. That's not how it works. We impose our history on our previous times with what we're thinking now and, and in light of the perspective that we have. Remember, the reason that we do these videos is because perspective, history gives us perspective. Perspective protects the truth and promotes empathy. And that's why we do these videos. If everyone knew the truth, gosh, we'd be just in a better place, wouldn't we? If we all empathize with one another, we'd be in a better place, wouldn't we? So let's hope and please comment on my video. Please share this and subscribe. And thank you for joining uh, Hark the Lark. Have a good day.